Today, I want to show you uh, some details on the SV971A sound meter from Svantec. I have it connected to their supervisor software, and it's running in light mode, as the software is. So you can see the meter is connected here, and it's just connected by a USB cable to the unit. I can synchronize the clock on the meter with my computer. So just to, ch if you're going to do some data logging, you want to make sure that the clock is correct. So that's been updated. It tells me that the memory is 99% free. There's a memory card inside the SV971A. But so the first tab here is your measurement tab. And there's different um, user interface levels, basically, of access or, or levels of menus. Basic start and stop, so it eliminates a lot of things out of the menu. Simple is still, it, it activates more options in advanced basically gives you all the options in the menu system. Um, so we'll, most clients would probably use simple, but you have those options. And actually everything I'm doing here, you can actually save it to a, a configuration. So if you have a setup of the meter and you want to be able to recall it, maybe you did something a couple of months ago and you want to redo it, you could just recall the setup and load it into the meter, or you can manually do it with the buttons. So the, um, Function here, the, the level meter or the sound level meter also can act as a dosimeter. Um, plus, it can also have octave band as well. And actually, that menu feature in the meter, if, uh, if you have octave band option installed, it would give you the octave band option in this list. Measurement range normal, but you can you know, put it in low level mode if you want. I won't go through all these different settings. Um, Things like integration time, though. So you've got, uh, if you want it to run it for eight hours for a shift or something like that. Also, we have different profiles. So profile one, so I'm in Canada, so we normally would use the filter A and the peak filter C and have the measurement on slow. But you can actually be taking measurements with other settings. So you can see they're using a C filter here. The Z filter is, is basically no filtering of the sound. So you can set up these other parameters and it, it would record those as well. And you can see those values. Let's go to, but the P1 is normally like for ACGIH measurements in Canada. These are normally the, uh, the settings used uh, unless you have a special application. If I go to time, History, uh, this is your logger name right now, and you can you can change the logger name uh, for the next recording. The display, I can see on the display all those these three profiles. Like I can index through those three profiles if I have this enabled. I can see statistics, the logger information, and the running SPL, like this, the basically that's the running uh, sound level. I can turn on different time history results for each profile. Again, I would whatever one you're most interested in, I work with P1 as your main profile. There's ways you can play with the scaling, things like uh, the screen setup, when it dims, um, the color scheme, you could probably leave it, because I know that like the one I'm working with will have octave band activated, and so the octave band will be very colorful while it's measuring. The results, LEQ for each parameter or for each pro sorry, for each profile. Display results, you can, you know, if there's certain things you're not interested in, you don't want it to take up um, screen space, or if you're, you're you know, you just want to make it easy to look at the results, you could turn off some of these things if you're not interested in seeing them. And general here, we can deal with the calibration. The um, I see this auto shut off time is set for five minutes. And actually, in the in the description of this video, I'm going to link to the web page so you could download the full manual on the SV971 to look into these these uh, options in more detail. For example, the keyboard, if you want it to start the start a run with this and then have it lock the keypad, you can actually define what the keypad sequence is to unlock it to be able to get back into the unit here. Uh, there's different warnings you can enable here as well. One feature that I have to play with still is 
this serial port connector, it's set to RS-232 right now. If I set it to Bluetooth, then now I have a, a pin number and there is an app that I can connect uh, to the meter as well. I haven't done that yet, but that's something I want to work on. Um, so anyway, so I've got, those are the basic settings. Now, if I go into downloading, oh, I'm not going to save any of that. Let's go to download. And these are all my file names I've generated from just playing around with the uh, sound meter. So if I was to select this one, so I've already opened the L14 file. This is the L10 I just opened now. And it gives me some details about the LEQ peak values. Some details, these are very quick and short runs, but also I get a graph here at the bottom as well. Now I can get more into generating reports depending on what I want to see. But this is a high level overview of basically the options that are in the meter and how to use the software with it. Most of these options here and settings can be changed right on the meter, but it's kind of nice to be able to set it the way you want it, save it, and then be able to pull it back later on if you wanted to reconfigure uh, the meter the way it was in the past.